Hello, today in my storytelling playlist, I'm going to talk about the trials and tribulations of Halloween in South Korea. In my last video in this playlist, I discussed autumn in Michigan and I mentioned a little bit about Halloween in that video. But here I'm going to talk about how different Halloween is in Korea than it is in the USA, at least in Michigan where I'm from. First thing I should say is that I kind of put people in Korea into two camps. The first camp are the people who have studied abroad or have you know went somewhere for their job. They've actually left this country and then come back. That would be the one camp. And the second camp are just natives that have never left. And I think there's a really big difference between those two kind of people. It's hard to imagine this if you've never been here, but Korea is very isolated. I mean, it's basically an island. I know it's a peninsula, but because of North Korea in the DMZ, it's an island, basically. And it has a history of being conquered by the Japanese and the Chinese and war, you know, with North Korea. So, like, it really has an isolationist mindset. They call it the Hermit Kingdom for a reason. Well, if the people have left, then they have a more kind of worldly idea of things in some ways. If the people haven't, then their lens is very small. And that's kind of what I'm getting to with this, is that if someone has gone abroad, their idea of Western holidays are very different than... A person that hasn't. When I say Western holidays, I mean if you're from the West, pretty much every holiday you know. And there are actually some holidays they don't even know, some of the more minor ones. But holidays like Christmas and Halloween, those are very different here. They have been exposed to them for a long time. But something more like Easter, especially the American idea of Easter with the Easter bunny and the eggs and all that stuff for children, that is pretty much non-existent here. In my time that I've lived in this country, the view of these holidays has changed quite a lot. When I first came here, I feel like Korean people were much more open to experiencing these different holidays and the customs that came with them. But there have been events that I think have tainted that a little. One of them is the Itaewon crowd crush, which happened in 2022. Um, if you know anything about that, there were too many people in a place called Itaewon, which I've been to several times, many times. And thinking about the geography, I can understand how something like that could happen probably shouldn't have happened there you know if you look into it there's a lot of talk about whether the police dropped the ball if they should have more security things like that that's probably true regardless i think there's a very distinct line that that event created for halloween there's sort of a pre and a post differential so it changed things i mean in in 2009 the first year i came here the attitude was very different but i think in 2022 in that instance and then even the few years before that from covid all those things have kind of changed the view of outsiders here a little you know i've talked to many koreans since that incident and they've basically canceled it in their minds like halloween is there's no more halloween because they actually a lot of people blame the holiday for that disaster, which I find kind of strange because like it, yeah, I mean, a lot of people were in that neighborhood because of Halloween parties and stuff. You know, that's the main foreigner neighborhood of Seoul. So I can understand kind of why they might think that, but like, I'm trying to imagine, you know, um, in Korea, they have a Thanksgiving kind of called Chuseok. I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering if something like that happened on Chuseok, would they have the same view of it? I don't think they would. I would say in the last five years here, there's been more of a resistance towards foreigners than there was the five years before that. So I'm not sure what it's going to be like, you know, as this keeps going on over the years. It might get worse and worse. I don't know. Maybe it'll get better. I don't know. But... As of right now, 
I would say less than maybe 5% of Koreans would participate in Halloween. You know, if you know 100 people, maybe five of them would end up going to some party or something. You know, maybe they might dress up for their school if they're a teacher or something like that. But other than that, I don't think they would do it. I think it's frowned upon a little bit, actually. For some of the foreigners that are here, it's not a big deal. Because, you know, in the English-speaking countries, some people don't really celebrate Halloween. I know many of my friends from, like, South Africa and guys from Australia, they're just like, eh, it's all right. They're not really that invested in it. But if you're an American, especially if you're not a, a younger American, I feel like people in their 30s and above were more into Halloween, maybe below 30, not as much. When you want to participate here, it's very difficult. Uh, the first thing that is hard is finding a costume and before the crowd crash it was like okay i need to find a costume that's very difficult i'm gonna do it now this question runs your head is it culturally insensitive me for me to wear a costume because am i bringing this tragedy up that uh people are still alive in people's minds it was a lot of people and strangely it was mostly Korean people, which is fascinating because Itaewon is mostly a foreigner kind of district. So that was an odd um, detail about it. Yeah, I mean, parties still happen. You still see Halloween parties being advertised and stuff at bars and clubs and things on the street when you're walking down the street. But I feel like it's almost more like, I don't know. I think five years ago, I could have walked down the street in a costume and people would have like pointed and laughed and be like, oh, that's very cute. Now, it feels a little different. If you do buy a costume here, or find stuff to make your costume, it either doesn't fit, <laughs> because it's built for a Korean body, which are much small, smaller than Western bodies, in the shoulders and things, very hard to find. Um, it might be made very cheaply, like it breaks. I had some vampire teeth a few years ago that just broke as soon as I put them in my mouth. Um, there's no selection, and it gets kind of worse every year. There was a store here in Daejeon called Joy Party. It was kind of a big party shop. And when I say big party shop, I don't mean like an American style party shop that's like a superstore. I mean just a party shop with some balloons and stuff like that, streamers. Around Halloween, they'd get a collection of stuff in, just random masks and wigs and things. Even like 10 years ago, it wasn't that much stuff. You had a hard time assembling any kind of costume from that amount of selection. I saw their supply going downhill over the last few years. Like they aren't replenishing the stock. So yeah, I mean in another three or four years they might not even have anything. I don't know. It's funny because when you did dress up, let's say five years ago, in the height of it, you were kind of a celebrity. I remember my friend, my friend is a bigger guy, and he's kind of got a bald head, and he's got a big long beard, and he dressed up like the devil. So he painted himself all red and he had horns. See, that's the only kind of costume you can do here. You can find makeup, you can find the horns and, and make a pitchfork, but then you don't have anything else. So you're kind of limited. Well, he dressed up like that and, you know, people were out on the street in the kind of busier neighborhood where everybody goes, where all the restaurants are and stuff. And all these people were coming up to him and getting their picture taken with him. Kind of because he looked sort of like a Buddha, but dressed like the devil, you know? So it was this weird juxtaposition, but people loved it. And like, there were like, there was like a line of like 25 people waiting to take a picture with him. The other thing is that over the years, in the time that I've been here, there are fewer and fewer foreigners here. I know that doesn't sound correct. And according to the numbers, that isn't true. I guess what I'm saying is there are fewer and fewer Westerners here. There are foreigners from the Philippines, you know, Taiwan and play, you know, Vietnam. Those are increasing because of factory jobs and things. But the Westerners, most of them would come here for teaching jobs and those are kind of drying up. So especially during COVID, many foreigners left. And so these parties and things, you know, they've just gotten smaller. So there's just not as much of a need for that around Halloween and Christmas and New Year's Eve as well, to a degree. I also think that that's something that Westerners 
do more is kind of take on a persona. I feel like, at least in Korea, in Asia, a lot of, you know, people are much more, I don't want to say they're all the same because they're not. They're actually very unique. But they have similar styles or similar things that they, that they kind of agree upon. Whereas if you go to the USA, there are many, many different styles and they don't always agree. And, you know, it's a lot more fractured culturally. But putting on a costume, taking on a persona, I think is a very Western idea. I just don't know if they really care that much here. They feel a little bit uncomfortable about it. For me, it's an integral part of my culture. When I was a kid, it was more important than Christmas, I think. I mean... I liked Christmas, but I loved Halloween. I, I love the creativity of it. I love just the whole thing. And maybe it, I've gravitated to darker things. I don't know, but I don't know what Halloween will be like here in five years or 10 years. If you watch this video 10 years from now and you're like, wow, it's the same or better, you can comment. Or if you live in Korea and you have anything to say or add about it, or if you don't agree with me on it, you can also say that. Or if you live in some place else where, you know, Halloween is treated this way or that way, or if you think it's it's losing some of its luster over the years. I know trick-or-treating is kind of definitely faded, but yeah, if you want to leave comments about any of that, you're welcome to do that. And that's all I got. Take care. Have a good day.